I better call Bonacera. I'm gonna need him now. Well, my friend, are you ready to do me this service? I want you to use all your powers, all your skills, and go online and vote for the Record Journal Athlete of the Week. Look how they nominate my boy. Buongiorno, buona notte, buona sera, whenever you may happen to be tuning in. I am Brian Carpenter, sports editor of the Meriden Record Journal, and welcome to episode number four of Record Journal Athletes of the Week for the fall 2018 season. Spence, we're kicking, man. We're rolling. What a beautiful day we had Tuesday and Wednesday here in the middle of October. Enabled us to get outside, do some shooting of the Meriden City Championships for cross country, and interview our winners from week three. If you remember, our nominees for the girls were from Southington Swimming, Miss Julie Duzak, from Cheshire Field Hockey, the goalie, the, the queen of the shutout, Miss Lexi Hemstock, and from Wilcox Tech Volleyball, Miss Chloe LeBissonier. And our winner was from Wilcox Tech, Miss Chloe LeBissonier, and we caught up with her on Tuesday. Shawnee? Here we are at Wilcox Tech, and we are with our female athlete of the week, Chloe LeBissonier. She's a Wilcox Tech girls volleyball player. Chloe, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. So tell us about this season. What's made this team so good this year? Well, I think there's definitely a lot of skill on this team. And as a whole, we act a lot like a family. So the two components together really complement each other. I mean, I think we're just going up some good competition. So like the team as a whole, we're like feeling the energy of it, getting into the games, definitely just like working on goals, setting new goals, trying to complete them, just working hard. What's your favorite type of celebration to do after a block or after an ace or what is there one that sticks out um our celebration after a block we basically just stand there we put our arms up we go oh. <laughs> <laughs> chloe thank you for taking some time out to speak with spencer and shawnee also on tuesday sean and spence caught up with our boys winner before he took the field who could it have been who could it have been? I kind of sort of just gave it away because one of our nominees was Mr. Shakespeare Rodriguez. He of the coolest name of all time from Lyman Hall football. We know he couldn't be, be taking the field on Tuesday. He and his teammates are going to be down at Ledyard on Friday. So we rule out Shakespeare like Professor Plum. That leaves, could it be from Maloney, Mr. Dennis Blandon, or from Platt, Mr. Cam Germay, both boys soccer players. The winner, from Platt, Mr. Cam Germay. Shawnee? All right, we're at Platt High School with a familiar face, Cam Jeremy. Cam, you're our Athlete of the Week once again. Cam, congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's appropriate that we're right here in your net uh, where you've made so many saves over these last four years. Tell us how many saves you actually have. I just passed 400. I think I have like 406 or 407. A lot of coaching, um, just every year feels like a different team almost because of uh, all my different teammates throughout the four years. But uh, it's, been a, it's been a good career. It's been a long journey. It's not over yet, but uh, um, I don't know. It's a big number. It just brings back a lot of memories. How have you changed as a goalie um, over the years? Um, freshman year, I was, I was really nervous. Um, there, was a, there was a big big shoes to fill. Jalen Highsmith left the year before I came in. I think Coach Redican said to the Record Journal that he was going to throw me to the Wolves. <laughs> Uh, if I remember correctly. How would you like to um, end this on this, this season on a good note here? What, what are some goals in the last few games? I would like to beat Maloney or at least put up a good fight against them this year. I played a lot of games against them and that's the one thing I haven't done yet. Now I understand this, this wasn't caught on camera, but I understand that Cam mentioned how his grandmother is really good about keeping his stats. And uh, she had Cam for just over 400 saves. I always trust grandmothers with information, you know, recipes, anything with numbers, they always get right. So, Cam's grandmother had him a little over 400. Platt Book had him for maybe just a little under 400. But on this day, Tuesday, October 9th, Cam did go over 400 saves and was honored uh, for reaching that milestone. Good for you, Cam. Good student athlete over there at Platt High School. He's had a great career. All right, that brings us to our week four slate of nominees. And where are we going to go? Because, you know, Spence, this past week, we only had two football games. It's a light football week. And that's okay because it enables us to uh, – you know, spread the wealth out a little bit. 
So we can start with the boys. We're proud to announce our first cross-country nominee for the season is from Sheehan High School. Ding! Mr. Derek Arnold. Derek, he's a junior, and he finished uh, second at the New Bauer Invitational and helped the Sheehan boys finish second. Sheehan girls also finished uh, second that day behind Liz Brown. Derek, at his home course, he ran A, going to the Magic Dry Erase Board. He ran an 18 27. He's been doing very well for the Sheehan Titans. Had a good uh, performance at the Wickham Invitation. I look forward to seeing what he can do in the state class meets at the end of the month. For now, Derek Arnold, boys nominee number one. Our second nominee, mm, we're going over to soccer. We had a soccer winner from week three. Our nominee from uh, week four, well, who else is it going to be? It's going to be somebody from Cheshire because Cheshire boys, they are 7-0-2 with a win today over Lyman Hall, 5-zip. They are ranked number six in the state. A lot of good players on this team. A lot of good players. A lot of guys we could have gone with. We'll probably go come back to this team before the year is out. For now, we're going with this guy, Evan Esposito. Now, there's a goal scorer's name, huh? Esposito. Soccer, hockey. If you're an Espo, you're going to score goals. Espo had one, a goal and an assist in last week's two-zip win over Hamden. He's a key player for a coach, Arthur Broncos Rams. Again, 7-0 and two with today's win over Lyman Hall. Evan, congratulations. Good to have you aboard as boys nominee number two here in week four. Our third and final boys nominee. Well, we said there wasn't uh, much in the way of football this week, but what we did have was big. It was colossal. It was huge. Wasn't it, Spence? Because you saw it in Britain where Southington came back to win 27-24. A lot of offense for Southington in the fourth quarter to come from behind and win that game. You know, Tanner LaRosa scores his touchdown in the final minute, puts Southington over the top. But the guy we're going with, with the guy, was a guy who was just he was just everywhere on defense that night. Really, you know, I, I think I wrote in, in the uh, the write up for this. If it seemed John Miller right here, Mr. John Miller, senior defensive end. If it seemed he was in on every play, it's because he pretty much was. He had 23 tackles, and uh, in, in the modern history of Southington football, only one other player has surpassed that. And here's a little trivia for you, Southington football fans. It was in 2004. With 27, Mr. Mitchell Welch, a fine player for Southington, and Coach Drew Kelly back in the day. Interestingly enough, Mitchell had those 27 tackles against New Britain. And here's John Miller, 23 against New Britain. Fine win for the Blue Knights. They bump up a little bit in the state polls. They are 5-0 and going into the bye week. That gives them plenty of time to vote for. John Miller, boys nominee number three in week four. All right, let's go over to the girls. I like the, uh, the girls' nominees for this week, one of, one, one of which I saw coming from, from a ways off. Kind of saw her coming from one end of the pool to the other, as it were, where this girl got on a radar screen last week, uh, early in the week, when she swam uh, one-tenth of a second off of a school record. And then by the end of the week, she had broken it. She is, and she's only a freshman, Miss Caroline Crock, Lyman Hall High School. Now, the record she broke was held by Brittany Driscoll. It was 108.2. The new record, and we're going to the dry erase board to make sure doubly sure, Caroline, because I want to get every little tenth of, hundredth of a second right. One minute, seven seconds, 0.72. 107.72. I bet you, Spence, by the time we get done shooting this, the show. I bet you she's broken it again. Again, Caroline, only a freshman. Good to have you aboard there. You are girls nominee number one, the 100-yard breaststroke record holder for Lyman Hall girls swimming. All right, from there, from the pool, we are going over to the volleyball court. We had rivalry matches last week, and we had one here, of course, in Meriden with Maloney and Platt. Maloney won three zip, but you know, as far as three zip matches go, it was about as back and forth as you can go. A lot of momentum swings and everything kind of, when it needed to, swung Maloney's way. And a big reason why this girl, Grace Anatrella, Maloney Spartans, kind of was in the middle of things when it mattered most. Her stats from that night, seven kills, three aces, total serving 16 for 17. That's reliable. That's like having a great reliever. You know, Spence coming out of the bullpen, you know they're going to throw strikes and get the job done. Grace was all that for the Spartans in their big rivalry win over the Platt Panthers last Wednesday. Grace, good to have you aboard. You are girls nominee number two in week four. Our third final nominee, we're going to stay in that rivalry match because we're going to give the Platt girls their due. They were led by this girl, Miss Caitlin Hart. She's been here before, volleyball, softball. She's a good player, great athlete, only a junior, and she's really the, the, the girl who makes things go for the Panthers. Now, that night against Maloney is, in, is indicative of what she does match in and match out for them. She had seven kills, 
nine digs. She is the one who makes it happen for the Panthers. Do you know, Spence, that earlier this season in a match against East Windsor, she had 14 aces? That's, that's insane. That's like hitting for the cycle in Yankee Stadium, you know? Okay, it is Wednesday, 6 p.m. when you see this video. Will the Red Sox and Yankees be playing a Game 5 tonight? I don't know. We're filming on Tuesday. Game 4 is tonight. Game 5, if necessary, is tomorrow. In the meantime, it's about 6 o'clock, and that gives you time to go online to MyRecordJournal.com backslash sports and vote for this week's uh, slate of nominees here in week four. Voting was, has been very good this season. We like to keep it up. Uh, the kids certainly uh, deserving of your time and attention. I am Brian Carpenter, sports editor of the Merit and Record Journal. I appreciate you tuning in. Join us again Saturday morning for This Week in High School Sports when we pick up this week's slate of football games. Be good. <laughs>